How cool is this? Hey there, Sharon Hornelstrom here. Are you a mincer? Mincer. This is actually a mincing tool for cooking. And these are words. Sometimes we mince our words. Do you mince your words? Are you a mince, a, a word mincer? Are you a mincer? Do you communicate in a way that isn't direct, open, and honest? Do you communicate in a way that is vague or uh, a little bit um, mild? Do you use mild words and vague words in order to not hurt people's feelings? Um, I'm sure in the past I used to do that. I'm sure I do that with my four-year-old granddaughter. I'm sure I um, soften the blow of the messages or the way I communicate her with her is in a, a lighter style than I might with other people. And so I guess I do mince words. I was thinking as I'm doing my Supersize Your Business video today that I don't mince words. I'm pretty direct. And in my business life, in my business, in my career, in my education, I, I had to develop a, a thick skin and and not mince my words. I had to be very clear, very specific, very straightforward and um, forthcoming, open and honest with how I thought, how I felt uh, in any given situation. I, I grew up, I grew up in a very male oriented environment and you know, the last thing you wanted to do was be seen as weak or soft or indecisive as a woman in those industries. Now, I think that the world of business is changing, but back when I started my career, because I'm pretty old, um, it wasn't that way. And if you weren't a very strong, very thick skin, I, mean, I think I've got a leather rawhide when it comes to um, feelings and, and things like that, when it comes to feedback in business and all the, the areas where we might want to um, use mild or vague language to not hurt people's feelings. Uh, I always, in corporate America, believed that if I was giving someone an annual performance review and they were surprised by absolutely anything they heard in that meeting, in our conversation, then that was my bad. That was me not doing my job in terms of always communicating with people and letting them know how they're doing. What I liked, what I didn't like, what they did an awesome job on, what um, they did an okay job on, but there were areas for improvement. And then what, you know, we were always really up for it and open when we tried stuff and it just didn't work. And what we learned from that. Um, so are you a mincer? Are you an absolute, I'm not gonna make a decision, I'm not gonna choose, I'm not going to hurt anybody's feelings ever. Um, to, the, to the point of, not honoring yourself. Are, do you do that? Um, I, I'm sure I've been in different situations done that. I'm sure I was married 20 years longer than I should have been, or 15 for sure, um, because I was in a situation with somebody that we had just opposite communication styles. He's a word mincer. I am not. He would be vague and use language that was um, hard to understand and talk in circles, and I'd be like, all right, this is a situation. This is what I think about it. This is what I think we should do. What do you think? That's you know, pretty direct, very different communication styles. And people come into our lives, and they, of course, are different. We, the people come into our lives for a reason. And I think that part of why he came into my life was to mellow out my, my directness. And my, I guess some people would see it as harsh. Depending on your personality style, if you're directed to the point with some people, they see it as being harsh or opinionated or judgmental. I, I always am just sharing my thoughts and my opinion on something, not telling you what to do. I have a couple coaching students that I do say, okay, we've been talking about this for X months and you committed to doing this. Now I'm telling you, you need to do it. You committed to doing it, do it, just do it. Is it scary? Yes, but just take one step toward it and watch the fear turn to excitement and fear just melts away when we take action. So mincing words. We mince words uh, for a lot of reasons. And usually with the best of intentions to not hurt people's feelings. But when we mince our words, when we use vague or non-specific language, we end up sending the wrong message. Uh, we end up causing more communication challenges because people don't really understand or know where we're coming from. And people should always know what to expect from you. People should not or should be rarely surprised by the reaction they get from you. I don't think people are very surprised by me. They know what to expect from me and I know what to expect from them because I try to be consistent in myself all the time. Now, it wasn't always that way. I mean, in corporate America, like everybody else, I put on the suits, I dressed up, I put on the veils, I acted in a certain way that was expected based on the position and the organization I was working for. 
Um, and it wasn't until 2010 that I just said, I'm sloughing off all this nonsense. And it was because I, I had a sudden cardiac arrest and dropped dead. And had I not had that experience, I would probably be dead because I would have not separated myself from the situations that were really, really bad for me. I was a huge, just going with the flow kind of gal. And I was actually sucking up and getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and more and more and more stressed out to the point that I exploded. I didn't really explode, I just dropped dead. Uh, but that was like an explosion, right? To come back and realize that none of it mattered. None of it was important. And to just let go of the things that didn't serve me and work toward and move toward the things that do, the things that make me feel good are the things that serve me, the people that I can serve, the people that I can help, the people that I'm meant to interact with. So are you a mincer? Yes or no? That's my question for today. <laughs> so I'm going to go shopping with one of my sisters this morning. Now, I, if you've watched me for any amount of time, you know that I absolutely hate shopping. But every once in a while, I need to get out and I need to do some shopping. I need to get some things. And I'm to the point that I need to do that. So I'm going with one of my sisters this morning. And we will see. And I'm going to actually consciously look for word mincing to see how much she does. Because I've never really thought about it before. I've never really thought about um, my communication style in terms of mincing words or being mild or vague in my language. I guess I probably wouldn't have been accused of that very often, even in my younger years. I think in my, my high school years, definitely, well, I don't know. I probably wasn't a word mincer. I was um, the editor of our paper, and so I was a pretty direct and forceful editor. Let's just put it that way. That's, that's a nice way of putting it. Um, and then in corporate America, I, I was in charge of quality and quality is a cool here's my secret about quality and why I love quality so much it's because it let me stick my fingers in everybody's business and everybody's pie <laughs> I got to report to the the top echelon of the organization always even when I was a little peon and I first started my career I still interacted with the the you know the executive suite and the, the chief executive officers and the presidents and, and, and that level of people so it was really fun and all the department heads all the other vice presidents or executive vice presidents and senior vice presidents because with quality the way we do things and quality to me was all about the way we do everything so every department every head and how we coordinate that effort amongst the entire organization to make sure that our, our customers are getting a consistent expected result right there's always a level of quality that you choose to have in your products and services and it's what's expected when I go to McDonald's I expect not to have the best food in the world but I expect it hot and fast and pretty and expensive cheap right so that level of quality is what their customers expect and so I loved quality because I got to be involved with everybody and everything and I got to see how everything worked and how everything worked together on a really high level which was where my mind played anyway so I always enjoyed that but it meant that I was in more of a regulatory procedure and processes and systems position and how you do that how you do the process how you do the process of identifying your processes is the same foundational framework and process all the time and so it was a matter of teaching that over and over again to different functions different functions of a business and applying it and then getting it all to work together as a whole for the organization's benefit and for the customer's benefit so um, there was a lot of word mincing that went on in there and I was not a word mincer um, department heads people that have climbed up through the ranks in an organization as they climb up tend to um, be be vague and they be they be watered down versions of themselves as they rise sometimes it depends on the culture of the organization. So, um, mincing words. Yeah, that's why I like that position. So, uh, what else have we got going today? Live Thrive Challenge. We're gonna, I'm going to do a bonus session today. I'll do a live bonus session either on how to 25x the messages and the content that you put out to attract people to the challenge or on um, the exact step-by-step -step how to do, how I exactly walk people through how I do a challenge, how I set it up, how I invite people, um, and how I do all that. Um, I, it'll depend. I'm having people in the challenge vote, so whatever they vote for is the thing that I'll do. And I may or may not do both this weekend. It depends. Um, 
It depends how much other stuff that I'm committed to doing. I've got a couple of big projects and a couple of coaching students that need attention. And so I got to figure out how I can fit it into my schedule. Otherwise, fun day challenge. Today was day 32 already. Day 32 days of doing one fun thing every single day. Now, most people would say, hey, go and shop with your sister. That's going to be so fun. <laughs> For me, the non-shopper, not so much. But I will find a way to make it fun. So that's it. That's all I've got today. Um, weekend days are sort of mine to do with as I will. I am working on a big project, a big project about challenges. I'll, I'll let that cat out of the bag, um, which I'll let you in on as I, as I actually frame it up and feel more confident in it, more confident in sharing what it is exactly that I'm doing. Right now I'm in the beginning research foundational framework stages of the project. Um, and once I commit to the project, once I, I get a go ahead from myself saying, yes, I am indeed going to do this, then I'll tell you what, what it is and what exactly I'm working on. Go out, have an absolutely amazing day. If I can help you in any way, if you have any questions about um, quality, of course, um, industrial engineering, now, now, don't get to ask me a bunch of mechanical industrial engineering questions. I haven't worked on that stuff for a long time, but um, anything to do with quality, anything to do with processes or systems, anything to do with, okay, click funnels. I am a, a click funnels certified partner, and although I don't sell those services or provide them for the people, I am pretty good at answering any question you might have about the software or especially about the strategy and applying um, that tool to your business. Um, things like the value ladder, things like the concepts taught by the ClickFunnels organization and Russell Brunson. I, I'm pretty uh, awesome at all those things. If you want to grow and build and supersize your business, hit me up. Uh, I've got a whole free treasure hunt. Um, actually, it's a, it's a scavenger hunt on my Supersize Your Business group page. You're welcome to go through that and it walks you through step by step by step by step exactly the framework, exactly the things you need to have in place to grow and build and supersize your business. So that's it. I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.